Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I have always had a love-hate relationship with Anchor Charts. I loved the support they offered my students as a resource in my classroom, but I hated actually creating them because it never failed that I would either run out of space or end up writing completely crooked. Wow, graphs and charts. But I have a solution. Digital anchor charts are the way to go. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through from start to finish how to create a digital anchor chart. Just to clarify, let's discuss what is an anchor chart. An anchor chart is a chart created in real time with your students to capture the important parts of a lesson. So that may include steps to follow, processes, or examples, and then it is displayed in your classroom for students to reference. You might be wondering, Michelle, how is that different than a poster? Nobody even saw my birthday poster. Posters are typically pre-created and then just hung in your classroom, whereas anchor charts are created with your students in real time. Now that can be time consuming, so some teachers will kind of pre-create certain parts of the anchor chart, so it almost is like a template that they then just fill in. They may already have the title ready to go, heading set up, they may have pictures either pre-drawn or printed so they can glue them on. Hi, hello, that was me because I have no artistic abilities. But the great news is all of those little time-saving hacks can be used with digital anchor charts as well. For this tutorial, I thought it would be fun to digitally recreate a physical paper anchor chart I had in my fourth grade classroom. So we are gonna be recreating this anchor chart on multiplying multi-digit numbers. Love how I put the number sign because I couldn't fit the word numbers. <laughs> the area model strategy. So we're gonna recreate this in Google Slides. So within Google Drive, I'm clicking on new and then Google Slides, but you can always just go straight to your address bar and type in new.slides and it will open up a new file as well. If you have seen any of my other tutorials, you already know I just get rid of the themes and then I click and drag to select the text boxes and then click backspace or delete on my keyboard because I like a fresh start. We are gonna be resizing the slide to an eight and a half by 11 size. That way, if and when we print it, which don't worry, those details are coming in a future video, I don't have to worry about any formatting. But keep in mind, you can make these any size that you want. We're gonna come up here to file, scroll down to page setup, where it says widescreen, we're gonna click and select custom, and then we're gonna type in 8.5 by 11 inches and click apply. Now, before we start creating the anchor chart, I want that example on the slide as kind of, you know, a reference point. So I'm just gonna click and drag in order to insert that image and I'm gonna put it off to the side so we can easily reference it, you know, like a true anchor chart. Even though that example doesn't have a border, I wanna add a border because when the time comes to print it, I would like a little guideline because we're gonna do some cutting, just it's coming, it's coming. So I'm gonna come up here to shapes, hover over shapes and choose the rectangle. I'm gonna click once just to insert it as a square, right click and come down to format. That way I can resize it exactly the way I want. Under size and rotation, I want the width to be eight and the height to be 10 and a half. That way I have a quarter of an inch on each side. I'm going to click and drag and use those red guidelines to center it, change the fill color to transparent, change the border to black, and let's make it eight points. Keep in mind, because this is YouTube, if I'm going too fast, you can pause at any point or go back and rewatch it. Now I'm going to add in my title. So let's add a text box. And I'm actually gonna split multiplying and then multi-digit numbers onto two lines. That way I can actually write out the word numbers without it being too small. So I'm gonna use caps lock just because I always like writing in all capital letters. And I'm going to change the font to Poppins Extra Bold. Let's make it size 60. Yep, that looks good. And we're gonna center it horizontally and vertically. And then I'm just gonna click and drag this text box so that it is right up at the top. That looks good. If you know my style, you know I love those black bars. So I'm gonna actually insert another rectangle. I'm just gonna click once and then I'm gonna just kind of drag it up here so that it lines up. Let's go a little bit 
further down. There we go. Drag it over so that it lines up there. Make it a little bit thinner. We're gonna change the fill color to black and we'll change the border to black as well. Now I'm gonna add text inside that rectangle by right clicking and choosing edit text. And let's go ahead and make it white font. That way we can see what I'm typing. So we're gonna type multi-digit numbers. And once again, we're gonna make it Poppins extra bold. And let's go, it's gonna to need to be smaller, 48. Oh yeah, pat yourself on the back, Michelle, that looks good. <laughs> and once again, we're just going to align it horizontally and vertically, and we can make this a little bit thinner. Perfect. That's what I do love about digital anchor charts. You can kind of play around with it, move things around, resize them, whereas you can't really do that on a paper anchor chart. I'm gonna add area model strategy as kind of a, a heading, if you will. So I'm going to select this top text box and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm using a Mac, so I'm holding down Command and then pressing D on my keyboard. But if you are using a PC, you would hold down Control and then press D. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to click three times to highlight all that text and type area model strategy. And I'm gonna highlight all of it by hitting Command A or Control A. We're gonna change it to semi-bold. That looks good. And let's try size 48. Nope, still gotta go smaller. So I'm just gonna click the decrease font size. Okay, let's go 44. That way we have a little wiggle room. And then I'm gonna move that up slightly. Okay. Now, I have two examples. I have one that is a one digit by four digit, and I have another one that is a two digit by two digit. I wanna kind of separate these. I know I drew a line on my example, hello, Ember, but I'm gonna actually add like a rectangle. So I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle I already have, and we're gonna make it, actually, I'm gonna just right click and go to format. I want it to be another half inch smaller for the width, so we're gonna do seven and a half and then we can just resize the height as we need it. So we're gonna center it, perfect, and we'll make it about there for now and then we can adjust. I need another text box in order to put the problem. So I'm gonna duplicate this one and drag it down. We're gonna resize it to match there. And I'm gonna type in that problem, which was seven times 3,584 equals and then we'll fill in the rest when we get there although i'm going to change this to extra bold nice and chunky okay that looks pretty good we can make it bigger let's go size like 56. we'll leave it there for now and then we can adjust later i do want to color code this so we're going to make that seven red and let's go ahead and zoom in so it's easier to see so we're going to make this red and i'm going to deviate from the colors i used here only because I think those were the only markers I had available. <laughs> so we're gonna make this orange, and then we're gonna make the five, we'll do this kind of like golden color, because regular yellow is hard to see. And then we'll do green, we'll do that green, and then we'll do blue. Okay, so that's looking good. And let's actually move this up just a little, perfect. Now I need to insert a table, and I could insert it just for these four columns, but I could actually type in my expanded form into the table as well. So I'm gonna come to insert, and for my table, I'm gonna do five columns and two rows. So now, and we'll make it like a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna put my multiplication sign in this top one, and I'm gonna go ahead and type my X, but I'm gonna click and drag. We're gonna change the font on all of this just so it's consistent. Let's go ahead and make it extra bold and then we can adjust from there. And I think most of it I'm gonna want centered, but then I might need to adjust some. Let's go size like 24 for now. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and align this X, my multiplication sign to the right and down so that it's as close down in that corner as possible. So. Most of the rest of this I would probably do in real time with students, but I can go ahead and set up like my colors. So for example, I want this to be orange because I want it to match my three in the thousands place. This one I want to be that kind of golden color. This one will be green. And then this one will be blue. Look at you. 
<laughs> showing your colors. Just to make sure that I have enough space, I'm gonna go ahead and type it to make sure it fits. That looks good. Although I know I'm gonna need less space on this one. Let's make this one a little bit more narrow. That looks good. Let's go ahead and change that to my red color. Here, I'm gonna have to type more. So I know I'm gonna need a little bit more space with my 3000. Okay, that will probably work. Let's go ahead and type seven times 3000. I want spaces. <laughs> okay, yeah, we need that a little bit wider. Okay, that looks good. Make that there. And then I will be hitting enter and typing in the 21,000. And I might be able to make that a little bit bigger. 30, okay, that works. I'm just gonna put a question mark. And then we'll backspace this as well. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, we're all good. Now I am gonna backspace this and I'm going to click and drag all of this. We're gonna change our outline. We want transparent because I don't want the outlines at the top but I'm gonna click and drag to select these three or four <laughs> columns, and we're gonna make it black with like a four point. That looks good. So now I can kind of resize this as needed. And ultimately, like that's the main part that I would need set up with students. Like I could do the rest in real time with them. This is just getting it set up to kind of save me time. But I do wanna duplicate this for my other example. So I'm gonna click and drag to highlight all of that. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and click my border so that it unselects the border. And I'm going to command D to duplicate or control D. And then I'm just using my arrow keys to kind of move this down. That looks good. Now I can go ahead and set up my second example problem. Let's move this down so I can see it. So this one is 52, so I'm gonna type that there multiplied by, let's get rid of the yellow. We'll do 96. For this example, I'm not gonna need these two columns. So I'm clicking and dragging to highlight it and deleting the columns. So I'm gonna click in this last one and click tab in order to add in another one. And then we can resize this down. Ooh, that looks good. And we'll move this up just slightly. Okay, so this one is orange, but it needs to be that green color to match. This one is going to be blue. Ignore Ember scratching the background if you can hear her. This one's gonna be that red, and then this one will be orange. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I have the basis of what I will need when I'm doing this with students. Let me just go into slideshow so I can see it full screen. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is something I could have set up ahead of time. And the great thing is once I set it up once, I'm good to go. I can reuse it from year to year or even duplicate it and change out the numbers if my students need another example. But in real time with my students, now I obviously no longer would need this. I would have that off of the screen, but I can then start filling in this anchor chart. And just to show you what that would look like, if I'm talking through this first example, obviously I'm gonna fill in that seven, and then we're gonna talk about expanding the 3,584, so it would be 3,584. I can then add in a small text box with a plus sign, so plus, and let's go pop in light, and let's go size 30 so it matches the other ones. Perfect, I'm just gonna center it real quick. Okay, so then I can just duplicate this and drag it over as needed. Okay, then I would talk through my the process with my students. So here we would discuss how we're multiplying seven times 3,000, and that gives us 21,000. And I can go in and color code them so I could make this that same red color and why did I not type another zero? There we go. I can make my 3000 orange. And then I would, with my students, just to save time, I'm gonna highlight this, copy it, paste it here, but then discuss how instead of 3000, we're now multiplying by 500. So this would give me that 3500. Do you wanna say hello? Do you wanna say hello? Go ahead. <laughs> I love her so much. 
okay, we're gonna throw ball after this, I promise. You gotta get back down though. And I would just continue this process with them. So let's paste here, make this 80, but change it to green. Okay, and that gives me 560. And I could resize this as needed, so I could like drag it over a little, beautiful. And then here we have seven times four, make that blue, and that gives me 28. And we backspace those. Beautiful, I might need to make this one a little bit wider. There we go, okay. Now I could shrink this down height-wise a little bit, because I don't need it quite that wide. That's looking good. I could even shrink over this one, scooch it over, and then now, in order to add my, oh, of course, my plus signs are all over the place. Okay, we're just gonna, I'm holding down shift as I click each one, and we're just gonna scooch those over. Okay, much better. Now I'm gonna add just a regular text box, and I want it to align to the right so that as I type the numbers, um, they will all stay aligned by place value. We're gonna go light, and we would type in 21,000, hit enter, 3,500, enter, 560, enter, 28, and I can add that plus sign if I want to. There we go. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks good. I can then add a line, and I'm gonna hold down shift as I make the line so that it stays straight. Perfect. And then we can start adding the place values. Now I'm gonna click backspace to get rid of that plus. I would type my eight, and then on my keyboard, I'm gonna click the left arrow key to move to the next place value. So now I would get eight again, click left, zero plus five plus five is 10, so we would put that zero. And then if I wanted to, I could add another text box up here to show my regrouping. But just for sake of time, I'm just gonna type my 25,000, and let's make this a little bit wider so I can fit all of it. Perfect, I would add that up here, 25,088. So now I have my digital anchor chart, and the great thing is I can use this for so many different things, and I do have another video on that coming. Now this tutorial was just showing you from start to finish how you can set up your anchor chart and then edit it in real time with your students. If it seemed overwhelming to you. You didn't poison me, it's just stress. Or if you're just wanting to save yourself a little bit more time, I do have a set of pre-made anchor charts for upper elementary math that I will link for you down below. I have completed versions as well as those template versions that you can go in and edit. So if you are interested, those will be down in the description box for you. But in my next video, I'm gonna walk you through how to print an anchor chart like this poster size so you can display it nice and large in your classroom. And in the video after that, I'm gonna be talking all things digital anchor charts. I'm gonna share my best tips. I'm gonna talk about how you can use them with students, how you can share them with parents and so on. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.